Brandon Davis, Swan Energy. Imran Khan, Swan Energy. Thank you both for joining the program here today. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about mining money. And one of the email questions I got this week was somebody asking how to invest in oil wells. That's something they re- see rig counts. They see it in the news all the time. And that's a pretty basic question. And, you know, for somebody who's used to playing the stock market or somebody who's used to buying gold and silver, they might not know how to invest in an oil well for an average person and for even someone in the industry, they might not even know how. And they work it day to day. So I thought we'd bring in Brandon Davis and Imran Khan to talk a little bit about this from Swan Energy since it's part of their day to day. And of course, they've got diversity in their portfolio as well with a gold mine, trucking industry, as well as other just fingers in a lot of different areas. So if you're looking for some sort of investment, reach out to Brandon Davis and Imran Khan over at Swan Energy, and they can certainly direct you in the correct area, I guess. So gentlemen, how are you doing today? Wonderful. Doing great. Well, can you... It's, it's very hot in Houston right now, I'll tell you. I bet it is. Boy, is it, uh, is it cracked the century? You guys over 100? Yes. Okay, that's a pretty normal day. Okay, good. Uh, well, let's get yeah, right... It's a normal day in August for sure, yeah. Well, I wanted to get to it here. I mean, you know, we're nearing, getting close to school starting for a lot of people. They're going to get into routines. They're going to start getting, sitting down and doing their budgets again. People are, you know, figuring out if the schools and all these different things, their unknowns are going to become knowns. Schools are going to be either homeschooling or they're going to be there. And that anyway, you get you get my point is that a lot of people, uh, their world of uncertain is going to become certain really quick. And when certainty comes, well, people want to think about investing. And a lot of people have talked about investing in oil and gas for a really long time and Right now could be a really good opportunity because a lot of people know buy low, sell high. So thank you two for coming on today. Talk to me a little bit about how somebody can get involved with uh, investing in oil or how they even go ahead and start doing it. Well, there are so many ways to uh, to invest in the oil and gas business as far as oil wells even go, uh, from going out and acquiring leases uh, to buying interest in wells, to buying interest in partnerships that own interest in wells. And in some cases, you can buy interest in partnerships that have interest in partnerships that own interest in wells. Um, it's There's a lot of ways to do it. And uh, the I don't know if, if, if I can answer the what the best way to do it is. I think everyone has their own risk tolerance and time tolerance and how much effort they want to put into their investment um, tolerance and that that is that varies from person to person to person but for, as far as buy low sell high if you can find opportunities in the oil and gas business that work at the current pricing I if it works cash flow wise I it's hard it's hard to it's hard to find a bad deal right now because it's either a deal works so it's it's a good deal because it works at this price or it doesn't work at this price and no one's gonna do that that just isn't gonna happen so a lot of the deals that depend on higher oil prices have kind of been um, put on the back burner, to say the least. Um, or in some cases, these guys have shredded them, write downs, and all those things that have been happening. Just we're done. Um, so there's there's a lot of good opportunities. There's just not as many as there used to be when oil was 70, 80 bucks. Um, but the current price point, there are lots of opportunities, and uh, we've been looking at them. We've made a few acquisitions for that very reason, and. Um, we're, we're excited about what's coming on our, our end uh, as far as new projects. All of them so far are looking like they're going to be in Texas, which is, um, which is newer for us, but there's some, just, there's some great opportunities. So uh, we're not going to pass them up. We still have a, a lot of non-operated interest in Colorado, and we're going to continue to have that. But um, starting some new ideas here in Texas that look like they would work really well at this price point. So many people look at the stock market as the pulse of the economy when, you know, that's not necessarily the case. You've got, you know, gold and silver and treasury bonds, and there's a, there's a lot of different things. And, and, you know, the oil and gas industry is still a pretty viable place to invest in, in a lot of different private areas. When I take a look at, um, 
what's going on in the oil and gas area. I think some people might have a question about the entry point. You know, you guys have this 401k program, and I'll let you have an opportunity to plug that too. But um, when they see, you know, Jerry Jones and, and a lot of these oil and gas people, do you have to be a billionaire to invest in oil and gas or can an average person? I, and, and I know you can through your 401, but outside of that, is can an average person invest in a 401k? Or I'm saying invest in an oil and gas investment? And uh, I don't know exactly what that means. Um, no, no offense. I, I don't know what an average person is. There are ways to get involved in oil and gas wells for most every person out there. So, no, you don't have to be a billionaire um, to be involved in the oil and gas business. We only work with accredited investors, so individuals who have a net worth of ex- excessive million dollars over their over their private residence. Um or, or an income over 200000 a year for the last two years. Those are the two minimum qualifications. We're usually well above that. But there are fun, uh, crowdfunding sites that, that any person, it doesn't matter, they might only have $2,000 to the name, they can put $2,000 in it. Um, those, there's out there, and, and those opportunities exist in real estate, um, oil and gas, and, and I'm sure it even happens in gold. I, I've, I, haven't seen, I haven't found one, but it wouldn't surprise me. So there, there is something out there for everyone, which is, which is great. Um, the risk tolerance and, and level of, of risk someone's willing to take is important. Our, our typical investments around a hundred thousand dollars. So, um, that's not for everyone. And when we talk to people about it, it's like, if you can't afford to lose that money, don't do it because you just, you never know what's going to happen in oil and gas. Well, so, um, that that's crucial for us is we, we, we don't want anyone in our projects that they can't afford it. And you gotta be able to walk away from whatever you do. And that's just how it is. I mean, it's no different than these big companies writing down, you know, eight billion dollars worth of assets to five hundred thousand, five hundred million. Um, it happens. You know, you don't always know what's coming. So the the business is risky in general. Um, that that's never going to change. I remember our conversation last week where you said it's it's been so easy to be in the oil and gas business. Like I've never seen. I don't remember any easy times in the oil business. Whenever it's really good and prices are up, costs are up, so it counteracts that. I it's always hard and. Uh, I will say that for all the negative things going on right now, um, finding opportunities that work at this price point are, it's kind of exciting uh, because there's there's things that I didn't know would work at this price point that we're seeing that look really, really good. So, Imran, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah. So, so one of the things when you're looking at an investment, one of the first things you want to look into is the risk of the investment, right? Um, you know, and I think from an oil and gas standpoint, pricing is always a key factor there, right? What what is oil at? What is gas at? That, that's always important to be able to understand. Um, in general, right now, you know, with that said, you have to look at where the market's going. Right now, we've hit the bottom a few months back. You know, we've gone negative. You know, I've talked. You know, we're in touch with a lot of you know great people in the city that are that are oil and gas experts, and you know, it, it seems the consensus is that. It's hit the bottom and we're on the way up. So, you know, what better time to get into an investment than to get in at the bottom and and ride the wave up, right? That's really the objective. Now, can it go back down? Sure, it can. So can the stock market, so can anything else, right? So I think there's got to be some sort of risk tolerance there. And uh, to Brandon's point earlier, um, you know, if if you can't stand the idea of losing that money, don't invest it, right? And that's with anything. Because price doesn't matter when you have a dry hole. Yep. It just it doesn't. That's true. You could get $1,000 a barrel of oil, but if you don't find the oil, it's worthless. Um, and that's unfortunately part of our business. So it, it does happen. A lot, of, a lot of what we look at, though, you know, those dry holes are probably, you know, like, for example, Colorado is a perfect example. A lot of the stuff that we've got over there, in order to have a dry hole, it's less than a 1% chance. In fact, it's probably like 0.1% chance of that happening. But that, that's definitely a possibility. So you, you don't know even that 0.1% could happen to you. you. You just don't know about it. And then the next part of it that you want to discuss a little bit is... Now, Imran, I've drilled wells in areas where it's like one out of 10 work. So. Well, that that can happen. I mean, it just depends on the, and how you're partnering it up, right? When you're talking about a lot of the the non-operated. So a lot of what we do with respect to non-operated is that we'll partner with a larger company and we'll own some leases within the space. So if they're drilling, think of it like uh, real estate. He brought up real estate earlier, right? You know, if you own one house, 
right? You know, if it's empty or if, uh, if you know, if the tenant does, decides not to pay, you only have that one house, so you, you won't have any cash flow that month. But if you're going into, uh, as Brandon mentioned, 10 wells, right, or 20 wells, something like that, a larger group, it's a lot harder. It's, it's more like buying a building, right, it's from a real estate example standpoint. So if one tenant doesn't pay, you've got, you know, nine other tenants or whatever it is that would be paying. Right. So you, you kind of balance it out from that standpoint, but you need to be able to understand how all of that works. And, you know, obviously having a good management team is very important. And, and we've been around for over 10 years now, and this is what we do. You mentioned about the risk a few times. And of course, risk generally means a better reward. So I would imagine the potential is, is for a higher return on investment then. That, for sure. The, the more risk you take, the more potential there is as far as upside goes. But it's it's a balance and it's it's a really a tricky balance. Um, you know, we have different parameters we look at. Every company out there has their own plan and how they're looking at things and what they do and what they don't do. And, you know, I, I hate I don't know. who You never know who's right or wrong until about five years later. Right. <laughs> you make that plan because it's just how long it takes to cycle through. So. Um, you know, it's, everyone does their thing and, um, some people like what we do. Some people don't. And that just, it, it just depends on who you are. But the, uh, generally in the oil business, it's, it's really, it's really difficult to evaluate different, different concepts from different places, um, without understanding the underlying thinking behind it. And I think that the risk, my risk tolerance and the guy down the street that does the same things, risk tolerance can, could be completely different. Um, and, and that is, it could, he could be more risky or less risky than us. And, you know, in some cases we've stepped out and done some deals that were way too risky and, and that just, it just happens. You don't really see it coming, unfortunately. So but what next that, thing you know, you spent $25 million and got nothing to show for it. I mean, it happens. Um, and it's not fun. With that said, though, keep in mind, you know, when when you're partnering with us, we have skin in the game, too, right? If we didn't think that it was a good deal, we wouldn't be doing it either, right? We're, we're not going to put our money on the line on something that's not going to make money. But sometimes it happens, you know, but you do your, your, your best due diligence. You make sure you're doing your homework to where you've looked at all the different parameters. And based on that, you know, you move forward. And that's what I'd advise anybody else that uh, that's out there investing in anything to do, right? You got to be able to look through it and understand understand the risks, understand the rewards, as you pointed out, Jason, and, and move forward from that standpoint. So I did want to bring up one thing before we transition into you know what basically what people can do and what the next step is for a lot of different people is um, there was recently a, the methane reduction with smaller to mid-sized companies. It's, it's helping them out in terms of uh, getting back into the game, so to speak. And the, the reason um, I brought up that uh, Kings of the Economy last week wasn't, wasn't so much about it was easy. It was that they represent 100 jobs per well. And they're, they're one of the tops when it comes to job production and just really making the economy go. And that was, that was what I meant by it. And so when I look at the way that the system is trying to enable it to get back to work again, I would think that'd be pretty good to help satisfy some of the risk, adversement, if, if you will. I'm not sure if that made sense, but to me, I kind of look at it like they're, they're really trying to make sure that the oil and gas industry keeps moving along one way or another because so much of our economy is dependent on it. Yeah, and, and that's a good point that you bring up. You know, honestly, a lot of a lot of these legislations. In this case, you're talking about uh, the Trump administration removing some of the requirements on on methane. You know, if you look at the the details for the last couple of years of production and the the amount of methane being released, what you'll find is we've increased in the amount of production in America. And overall, we've reduced the actual amount of methane on its own. Uh, it, it, this is just something that it's probably more of a political thing than anything else that these things are out there from different administrations that, that, that uh, move on these subjects based on who their, who their constituents are. But overall, 
I think it's good to be able to have less in these spaces from a regulation standpoint, just because you're right, you'll have more folks that are smaller companies that are able to be able to do a lot of the work that they need to do, right? Uh, to be able to go out there and drill and, and, and do the work. And a lot of these things really don't get affected by the numbers from a, from a methane release standpoint and all that, but it just sounds like good news is why people have it out there. Are they talking about flaring? Yep. And methane release? Yep. And no one wants to flare gas. It's worth something. Like what's it just, sometimes you have no choice, but, but it's funny because they'll put regulations on methane, but also they won't allow you to uh, put uh, pipelines in. So it's like, which, you know, which one it's like, okay, you don't want to put a pipeline in to be able to take that gas and put, move it onto some sort of point where we can actually sell it. But at the same time, you don't want it flared either. I mean, you, you can't have your cake and eat it too, right? It doesn't make any sense to me. But most most things on that side of the world don't make sense to me. You know, it's it's rather interesting too because you know last week we talked about the '90s being a down decade, and you know, and that's when a lot of that methane rules were in place, and it's when they kind of scaled them back a little bit. It allowed some of the stuff to open up, and then during the Obama years, it got put back in, and then now they've scaled it back a little bit again. So it's supposedly supposed to open up some opportunities for midsize and smaller companies so they can compete and. In, in, in the marketplace right now, and um, it's um, it's too bad the politics gets get, gets in in the way of some of these things because I'll tell you what, if 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 the market would just let the market work, we wouldn't be having ninety percent of these problems, in my opinion. No, you you, you wouldn't, and it's interesting that you know, when everything goes south, the the government bails out the banks, the government bails out um, the auto industry. Um, I'm sure most any other industry would be bailed out except oil and gas. And it's crashed in the eighties and then the two thousands a few times since, um, the beginning of the century. And there's never been a bailout. There's never been anything. And I don't ever expect there to be. You just see it, fines imposed. All you get is more regulations to make it harder to make money instead of even, you know, staying out of the damn way. So, um, it, it is a never, it's a, it's a never, ending moving target is what it is and it makes it um makes it hard hard to make decisions in this small company like ours i mean you know we we gotta we gotta say we gotta play it safe and i'm sure most small companies do because you can't take the risk of something coming where the government comes down on you with something that you didn't even know existed um so very cautious hey i i got a really dumb question here um you know, you guys, you know, take investors, obviously, and, and that's that's what you do. And that's why you're here is to help people make money and and understand opportunities. And um, the, yeah, we are the crude life, primarily oil and gas. But I guess my, my guess is you guys would have investors outside of oil and gas, don't you? I mean, there's a lot of farmers that listen to this program. I mean, we're across the upper Midwest on the radio and Lord knows a lot of their radio stations haven't changed the dial in 45 years in their barn. So <laughs> they're, they're list, I've got them as listeners by default, so we'll take it, you know. But uh, uh, my guess is, you know, there's probably a few people outside of the oil and gas industry that are, that are listening to this over the radio airwaves. So uh, do you guys take investors outside of the oil and gas industry? Talk to me about, you know, who some of your partners are. Well, we have, it's very, very, very diverse. Um, there are people in the oil and gas business and there are people that um, aren't. And it just depends on, again, it goes back to their risk uh, tolerance and, and what they're looking for out of things. And that uh, varies person to person. It doesn't really matter what their background's in. Um, we look for smart business people that have made themselves wealthy, um, not looking for just money. We're looking for the right partner. Uh, to be to be part of our projects and there's a lot of other companies out there that do the same thing and they you know they all have their what, what they look for as far as new people that come in and there's different levels of investment etc i mean that's a it's a big variable really um there's not any it's it's very hard to define a specific group because there there really isn't one um it's just a matter of of you know who we happen into that is a good fit, and it's and it's not always a good fit, even when people have plenty of money. So um, it's just it's a it's a tricky situation. That that's a hard one, and and only because the 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 partners that we have, the investors we have, are so vast as far as diversity that it's really hard to pinpoint who 
what, when, and where. Um, so we're, you know, we're always looking and um, always working. So those two things kind of work together. What's the, what's the next step for people if they need if they want to check out more information or they want to inquire if they would like to uh, you know you're dealing with people's money so it's um, I imagine there's probably a a phone conversation at least involved or something like that. Yeah, our website SwanEnergyInc.com has a place people can go on to and ask for information and um, give us a little bit of information before we get that far the, the, the conversation to make sure that that uh, they know what we, what needs to be for us. And, and, and we get some confirmation from them as to what they're doing, but you know, drilling wells, you can make money, you get tax deductions too. Um, the beautiful part about the new, new tax code is that most everything that you invest is deductible in, in year one, about 80%, depending on the person and their tax situation. Um, in some cases it'll be higher than that. In some cases it'll be lower, but it's uh it's nice with the equipment being able to be written off 100 percent the year um, that the money spent is is really good. So there's a there's a lot of good things going there. Um, so tax deductions and making money are are obviously the two primary, uh, but it's also fun. So you know it's it's, it's never it's never a dull moment around here. That's for not sure. at all, not at all. And I think on the on the tax benefits part, just to kind of give a, a better understanding around that too for folks. You know, if you're if you're making two hundred thousand dollars, you're probably paying about fifty grand in taxes, right? Uh, maybe even more than that. Just depends on what what uh, what all you're doing. But if you're if you're paying that, you know, the idea is that you know why just give it away? You know, why not allow the opportunity to be able to make that money work for you, right? So instead of paying that out in taxes, now you've reduced the actual amount that you've invested with us and basically pay even less in taxes from that standpoint. So, you know, and, and we're no, we're no tax advisors from by any chance we're not accounts. You have to be able to talk with them to, to get the full scope on things. But what we see from our investors is that, you know, they really do appreciate, you know, come September, October, they're thinking, Hey man, I got, you know, I'm, I'm in the whole, you know, hundred grand in taxes. How do I get some of that back? And this is an opportunity for them. And I, I wouldn't do a deal just because it, it gives me tax benefits. I do a deal based on the fact that it gives me a good return. And, you know, again, we're invested in all of our deals, so it's it's not that hard for us to kind of uh, talk about it and, and, and tell you that, you know, this is what we do and this is what we enjoy doing. And, yeah, it's exciting. I mean, uh, every day that, you know, that I'm here, I'm super excited to get up and, and come into work, if that makes sense. And that's you another know? important part to, you know, maybe even, I don't know, but if, if end on, but at least point out again, which is, you guys are invested in this too. So you mentioned before that you've got skin in the game and in today's day and age, that is a really important piece of the puzzle. I think. Well, that's important, right? Because, you know, not only are we managing all of this, but you know, we're here and we're part of the deals that we're making. And I think that that's essential for people to understand that, you know, I think a lot of people kind of are, are coming to it as, Oh, well, you know, we don't want to lose money. And no, we don't either. <laughs> <laughs> we're here to make money, right? And you know, we've got a beautiful office off of the off of the freeway off of 59 in, in Houston. And you know, it's because of the fact that we made good investments. It's because of the fact that we do good deals. Sure, there's there's deals that don't make money, but that's part of it, right? I mean, you know, kind of what I was talking about with the real estate stuff. You don't want to just have one house. You want to have ten houses because if one doesn't make it, you've got nine others that are making it. Right. So it's the same concept. And that's how we try to set up our, our investment strategy, too, with Wells. Now, and anybody that is thinking about oil and gas and investing in it, um, you know, I, I would implore them to get information from as many places as they can to give them a good understanding of what it's all about and, and use that to help them make a decision. Um, and, and again, it's there's no right or wrong person for it. Um, there's literally something out there for everyone. And I, our business on the fundraising side has picked up quite a bit since, uh, since May. And um, mainly because I, I believe that people are looking for somewhere else to put their money besides the market because it's been crazy. I have no idea because it's not, um, not me doing it, but it just it seems like there's been an uptick for sure. So I think the alternative investment market has definitely been growing 
just you know, just because you hear all the time that hey, people have got cash on the sidelines. You know, they may have cash on the sidelines, but I believe a lot of them are investing in other areas other than just the stock market these days, right? Just because of what's been going on, and you know, sure, it's nice that it's it's gone up. But at the same time, the volatility aspect of things really, really is scary. So whenever you can be able to spread out and diversify, it's always a great thing. Any final thoughts uh, as we conclude this week's Mining Money? I, I know I was just thinking of a story of a friend of mine who owns one of those trampoline parks, and then he got into some oil and gas investments for a while because he wanted to diversify his portfolio and he did pretty well back in the day. And he still talks about it at dinner parties and that sort of thing. And so that's what I was thinking about how here's a guy that owned a trampoline park and he got a brag at dinner parties seven years later that he was a participated in owning an oil well. So it's, it, it can be really for anybody and, and it keeps going beyond that. But uh, any final thoughts as we kind of, wrap up this week's uh, segment on mining money no and the more we say every time we say mining i just kept i keep thinking about the price of gold being so high. <laughs> hey by the way how's that doing over there i mean boy you, you might jeez the gold mine is what's that <laughs> causing a conflict i bet rethinking next investment strategy because of it <laughs> well gold is, is certainly We're going right. up in price pretty well i mean it's over two thousand bucks Right, that's the problem. I and know. We started when we started putting our our mine on the market it was about a year ago, and it was like thirteen hundred. So it's uh, it, yeah, I'm gonna have to get with my investors in in the gold mine and see what they want to do. But um, I don't know if a good enough offer could come in at this point to make it to further would take it because of the price. I mean, the valuation obviously most valuations of anything that was done at thirteen hundred is going to be a lot higher at two thousand. For the same amount of gold. So. Well, it's it's so interesting how there's you know a moral of a story there, which is this is no different than what we were talking about with the oil wells. So I mean, if thirteen hundred dollars back then, if somebody would have bought it now, they'd be making over two thousand. Same thing with a lot of these oil wells. You know, when oil prices are below fifty bucks, forty bucks, thirty bucks, that's pretty good to buy in, and it gives you a lot of opportunity to do some different you know some different things there, but. Um, Anyway, I just thought I'd point that out, that uh, if somebody would have bought it a year ago from you at 1300 they'd be doing okay, wouldn't they? Yeah. Yeah, they, they would have made 60% without doing anything. I know. Do you have anything to say, Brock? We, we got we got our uh, junior consultant in here. Holy smokes. Brock it's like, Davis. all right, we, we, we picked up uh, somebody on the road, like we were doing 75 miles an hour down the interstate, <laughs> picked up a hitchhiker. Let them in. Let's see if they can sing Mockingbird. All right. So what, what do you got today, Brock? Let's end the segment this week with uh, some sage wisdom from Brock. There it is. Uh, I think he said bye. I'm not sure, but okay. Well, that's his famous, huh? And he points at things, and you don't ever really know what he's pointing at, but... He's certain. I tell you, I we got I got a dog under me. You've got Brock there. We got all kinds of different things here. This is a the the twenty first century of the office is great. I tell you, it's definitely a different place than it was six months ago. (laughs) 